In this demonstration, I'll show you three separate examples on how to use the squeeze theorem to find the limit of a function. Also known as pinching or sandwich theorem, the squeeze theorem is used to evaluate the limit of a function that cannot be computed at a given point. Let's start with question number one. In question number one, they are asking us to find the limit as x approaches zero for the function x squared times cosine five over x. So we'll start off with what we know. We know that cosine, the function itself, hovers between positive one and negative one. There's positive one and here is negative one. So what we can do is we can separate this function, given that it's a product, and start with simply this part. Let me demonstrate what I mean. So we know that cosine five over x has to be between negative one, cosine five over x, and it's less than or equal to positive one. In our next step, what we'll do is multiply this whole thing by x to the power of two, where we get negative one x squared, x squared, this function, and x squared times one, giving you x squared. And we can take the limit of this, and we can take the limit of this. So the limit as x approaches zero for negative one x squared is equal to zero, and the limit as x approaches zero for x squared is also equal to zero. And so therefore, according to the squeeze theorem, the limit for this is also equal to zero. Now here's a graphical representation of what we just did. So I graphed this function, which represents x squared, and I graphed this function, which represents negative x squared. I also graphed the function cosine five over x. And I discovered that as this green wave gets closer and closer to this point right here, it becomes undefined. Let's move on to question two. In question two, they're asking us to find the limit as x approaches zero for this function. Now, once again, we're gonna start off with what we know. We're gonna start off here. And we know that sine hovers between also one and one. Sine function looks like this. So we can say that sine one over x squared will be greater or equal to negative one and less than positive one. And we will apply the six next to every part. So negative one plus six, six plus sine, negative five, six plus sine one over x squared, and seven. And next we'll apply x to the power of four by multiplying every component by that. We end up with negative five x to the power of four and seven x to the power of four. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the limit of this and the limit of that. And you'll find out that if you do that, as x approaches zero, you get, once again, zero. And for this one, you also get zero. So therefore, by the squeeze theorem, the limit of this complicated function goes to zero. Finally, our last question, asks us to find the limit for this complicated function. Once again, we'll start off with what we know. So cosine one over x to the power of three is between negative one and one. Next, we'll square everything. And if we square this, we end up with positive one, cosine one over x to the power of three and the squared version of one is equal to one. Now, since we, you, you can't have your function between one and one, I mean, they're both the same, we're going to replace this with zero. Zero is less than or equal to cosine squared one over x to the power of three. Next, we'll apply minus three to all three components. This leads to negative three cosine squared one over x to the power of three minus three and one minus three is equal to negative two. And finally, we'll multiply every component by the square root of x, which gives us 
minus 3, the square root of x, and the square root of x times negative 2. And if we take the limit of this, and if we take the limit of this, the limit will lead to 0. And via the squeeze theorem, the limit of this also equals to 0. And here's a graphical representation of this function. And there you have it. Three examples on how to use the squeeze theorem to find the limit of functions that would otherwise be impossible to compute. If you found this tutorial helpful, please support our channel by subscribing or by liking this video. If you have any further questions, you may visit our website at biology-forums.com. We are an online service for students seeking free homework help. See you soon.